Well, hi, welcome back to the studio. Well, it's the day after last night's live stream, which was on Wednesday, the 10th of March, 2021, and um, had fun painting clouds, but my camera didn't have such a fun time. Hands up, my fault. A greenhorn error, I didn't get my lighting right, and my camera spent most of an hour chasing the shadow around my canvas, and lots of it was out of focus. So what I decided to do is reshoot it, and I've done it in the same sort of like live stream style. So. No edits, just kind of rough and raw, um, warts and all. So, um, but I've refilmed it, and all the points I covered in the live stream, I've redone again for you. So, um, spin the camera and let's roll the film and see what I got up to. So, how are you painting, people? Well, this is it. I'm going to film this, warts and all, start to finish. Um, whatever happen, happens, if there's background noises around the house, then there is. But let's have a quick look at what I filmed last night. So, I've got this the little demo that I did last night, as you can see the not quite cloud on the left there and the slightly better clouds on the right. So let's refilm this again and I'll go back to the beginning with it and get my hand a wipe. And this is the palette I, I used. In actual fact, it's the palette I used last night. I just put some fresh paint on it. So I have titanium white, I have some phthalo blue, a little bit of black, alizarin crimson, and this rather nice pastel lavender colour on, on the end here, which is which is mainly white with a tiny bit of thaler blue and a little tiny bit of alizarin crimson. And I made this soft pastel mauve color and that's gonna be used a little bit later on. But as you can see, I set my canvas up exactly the same way as before. Um, so it's identical to the, to the previous way I had it set. Um, now, I got my little list of questions here and points to remember as well to work from. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is, is prepping your canvas colors now you can see that i've got my my canvas set up differently here um this one has got a, a nice sort of phthalo blue color in it and quite a good strong color and this side well a little bit underwhelming and it's it's got paint on it if you if you test your canvas before you start painting on it and you touch your fingers to it if i hold my fingers up to the camera if you can get a focus on that you can see that there's enough paint on there I can I can definitely see my fingerprints, so that that all looks good. So there's liquid white and paint on there, but this side is very very pale, and this is one of the problems I I used to have when I painted before, and I'll, I'll mention this now. I'll probably mention it again that all of the things I'm going to demonstrate and the way I'm going to do this little demonstration are all based upon my own mistakes, mishaps, and and happy accidents in the past. So. If you see any similarities between what I'm painting and, and what maybe you paint, it's purely coincidental. I, I, this, if I'm poking fun at anybody, it's me. Um, I'm the one who, who didn't know what I was doing so very well um, a few years back. But with uh, some training and some help and, and an awful lot of practice, I got a little bit better at it. So let's have a go at painting our first cloud. Um, and I've just got myself a fan brush. In fact, I've got... got Got several fan brushes. I got a nice, fairly clean new one inch brush, got a little bit of paint on it. And the brush I used to prep my canvas with, that's just a slightly older one inch brush. Um, I put liquid white on both, and I put, say, phthalo blue on one and a very little phthalo blue on the other. So let's have a, let's have a look and see what happens um, when we start putting clouds on. Now, things to remember, um, kind of an important thing is, is is the very first thing is about the layout of your painting. Where are you going to put your clouds? Now, if I, if I scrape my canvas and kind of create a nice nice looking mountain shape there, there you go, you can see it nice and clear. If that is in the same position as where you want a nice big cloud, so in other words, if you put your cloud there in the first place, and you're going to just paint a big whacking great big uh, mountain through it, and if there was a tree nearby, and I'm exaggerating this of course, but you know suddenly your cloud is obliterated by everything. You've got very little of your original cloud left. Most of it is covered up. And this happens a lot. We paint that absolute stunning cloud and then realize that we're gonna put a tree over it or something. And, and you think, oh, if I'd have just moved the cloud over a few inches, the worst thing then is to try and make the tree fit around the cloud. And I've done that and I've looked back and I thought there looks like a hole in the, my tree where the cloud is sitting. So planning, plan ahead a little bit. The other thing to 
be aware of is things like this. And I did this at a demonstration. Um, I, I actually painted a little cloud, first of all. I painted a lovely little cloud, but it just happened to line up exactly where the top of my mountain was. And the comment was, why did you paint Mount Vesuvius? And it, I didn't know I'd done it until I stood back. And there it was, Mount Vesuvius with the uh, steam and smoke coming from the top of it. An absolute killer. So be careful when you're prepping your canvases. And as you can see, I, I use my canvas, or in this case I'm using paper, but you can sketch, use a palette knife, draw a little cloud. And if you don't like it, put it somewhere else, change it around a little bit. So that's gonna be my very first tip. Position and a little bit of planning where to position things in your painting if you've got other big features like trees and and mountains and hills and goodness knows what else then plan a little bit ahead so let's start off with a shape um, and this is a classic sort of sort of shape cloud got a nice cauliflower top to it and a flattish base so this is a cumulus cloud and you'll see these floating around on the horizon Got a bit of a stormy day outside today. I had some out there this morning, but they've gone. But this is a bit of a classic sort of shape, a cauliflower cloud with a nice bubbly top on it. And I'm gonna use a fan brush to paint this. Now, I will do some one inch clouds as well, but I'm gonna go through my titanium white paint, both sides, and I'm gonna load a lot of paint, a lot of paint. And that's something I didn't used to do. I'd start off with just a, a small amount of white paint, not enough to really do the job, and I'd struggle. And I'd work and work and work and try and make my cloud stand out. And years later, I was painting away, and one of the uh, instructors came and they said, you know, if you just put a little more paint on your brush, you would make a big difference. And they were dead right. Um, now, brushes are a little bit like people. Um, they like to be led across um, a canvas and like people we hate being pushed so when you're painting with your brush use your brush like a little soft palette knife and, and lead it across you can have it down at a slight angle and lead it across that way but I like to lead with my handle first if I can so in this case I'm right handed I'm going to go from the left I'm going to paint to the right and all I'm going to do is a little series of letter C little letter C and that's in this case it's a backward one but you can do them that way round if you wish. Anyway, just, to, just to show you can do it. And all I'm looking to do here is I'm just looking to create that lovely heavy edge for my cloud. And I don't spend too long fretting over this and working too hard. Um, again, through experience, I have found that my best clouds are the ones that I that I paint with a little bit of speed, a little bit of pace, that I don't sit and work at too hard. They come out the best, they always do. Now I've got a nice sort of silver lining to my cloud and I've, I've picked up a little bit of blue. And I'm not gonna waste that paint. I'm gonna just dab in the center of my cloud. And very quickly you see that I've created something more three dimensional. It looks, it looks like it's got some shape and form it's got a few lumps and bumps in it and i'm just going to dab in some paint here and then i'm going to blend it a little bit but not very much i got my nice clean new brush for this and this is going to be literally as few dabs as i can all i look to do is to try and combine this a little bit without losing any of it and when you use your brush don't hold your brush and try and paint with the bottom corner because you're just covering up where you're painting Try and tip your brush so that you've got the top corner so you can sort of see where you're dabbing, okay? So kind of angle your brush. And this, the path I'm gonna do is sort of up and down from the base of my cloud, tapping little letter C's up and down. But I'm gonna leave that very top edge alone, leave that bright edge. So what I'm doing is I'm just squashing the paint down a little bit, up and down down stop just short of the edge and down and up close and down and I'm gonna just 
soften out the bottom of my cloud just a little. And as quick as that, you've got a lovely fluffy cloud with a little silver lining to it. Let me put down my palette for a second. I'm going to wipe my brush. Whoop. So, no edits. I'm going to just give my brush a little bit of a dry clean. And I'm going to just brush the paint into the center. So I'm going to brush from the edge into the center. And I'm going to use this part of my brush, the soft edge. And I'm literally going to just drag it. Absolutely no pressure. I'm holding it finger and thumb. And what I'm doing here is I'm just rolling the paint into the center of my cloud. Okay, and I just wipe off that surplus. And then to finish it off, I go gently across. And that's it, one cloud, as quick as that. Don't fiddle with it, don't mess with it, don't take out all these little details. Just leave it floating along there, nice and happy. So let's try painting another cloud, but on a background which is just a wee bit too pale and see the sort of trouble we're gonna get ourselves into. So, pick my palette again, load the same amount of paint, so there's no difference. And let's see if we can scratch a design on there which you can barely see. And again, I will lead my brush across so it's got just as much chance as the other cloud. And you see instantly the problem is it is it barely stands out it's really ghostly okay and it doesn't really matter how much paint i apply because i'm applying white paint on pale backgrounds now i know that somewhere somebody is screaming at the camera or the computer saying but we've got clouds like that in our sky and our skies are pale and i can see my clouds and you should be able to paint something like that and, and you're absolutely right you should be able to paint lovely pale clouds against a white sky and that would be fine but when you're starting out and you're learning to paint give yourself every chance of success by painting against a sky that's got a little bit of color in it because that's one of the advantages of painting is that as bob would say it's your world you get a chance to design things your way so shouldn't be too you should painting shouldn't be too hard it should be too much of a, a torment for you so anyway this is the best i can kind of get to um just about shows up oh, gosh i don't even dare dare try and blend this little cloud but let's do a little blend on it and down into the base and up and tap out the base of the cloud so you can just about make out the shape of it. You can just about make out it against the background there, but it's, it's hardly the, the, the biggest, brightest cloud you've ever seen. And compare the two, I think you'll find that, that one is the one that most people really love to look at. And this one, well, may be good for another sort of painting. So make sure you've got a decent colored background for your, for your clouds. Now, I'm gonna take this cloud off and I'm gonna darken this area up so that I can do some other little cloud shapes for you over here. So I'm gonna do that and we'll come back in just a second, but it's gonna be just shot raw. And if there's background noise, you hear the wind blowing outside, it's blowing a gale out there, then so be it. So back in a second. So I tidied up this cloud and I've darkened up the sky on this side. So um, that's quite an appealing shape. Let, let's paint some shapes which maybe not quite so appealing, but we, we somehow fall into the trap and and one of those cloud shapes and again I'm guilty of this I've done it before is to, is to paint what I call Loch Ness monster clouds these ones this sort of regular shape of humps and bumps and somehow no matter how you try and change them they always look just like the Loch Ness Monster and try as you might sometimes they they just keep on happening so try and avoid this sort of shape cloud I know again there's probably somebody right now looking at a sky where it has a Loch Ness Monster sitting in it but 
when you're painting, you've got to think about what's appealing, what, what, what looks realistic and what looks nice on the eye. My, if I'm looking out the window now, I'm looking at an amazing array of cloud shapes. Fabulous. These clouds, I'm looking at hundreds of these big cloud shapes, but I can't see one Loch Ness Monster cloud. Now, when we do this, we often jump quickly to try and repair it by putting in something that looks completely different. And what sometimes happens is that we end up painting and, and again I don't know how it happens but we end up painting the the mirror image of it in the hope that somehow two opposites will cancel one out but of course it doesn't it it just makes the whole thing look worse now I've really I really hammed it up here maybe you wouldn't do that but you'd be surprised at how often you'll paint these sorts of shapes by mistake and you don't know you've done it until you stand back so a good lesson to learn is when you're painting is to stand back frequently take a step back from your painting have a look at it make sure it's working out before you get yourself into a pickle and the other cloud shape that creeps in and it's, it's i call them sausage clouds they're very we kind of get get sort of stuck in with a little bit of paint not quite enough paint and we seem to be afraid to make too many humps and bumps, so we tend to keep them sort of low and flat. And I've definitely seen clouds like that. I'm looking out the window, and I can see very similar clouds to that. But what I don't tend to see very often, if at all, is to see that he's got a friend that looks like that. And another one that looks like that. Now, this is the edge of my canvas here, so imagine that's the edge of my picture and I have one that looks like that and this is something I have definitely painted by mistake and it literally looks like a bunch of fingers coming in clawing down the side of my canvas like someone's gripping onto the edge and their fingers slid off this sort of evenly spaced um, probably worse than that is when they all end up exactly the same length um, so they look like a series of little white lines floating along this is something I've definitely done before and I still see it occasionally when I start a painting and I'll spot myself doing this and I'll quickly change direction so this again is another shape to be kind of careful of the regular shapes regular lengths regular sizes and kind of stuck I think this tends to happen a lot for people who spend their time looking at computer screens or text and they tend to sort of paint like a line of writing like text on a, on a on a screen so just be aware this 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 sort of thing creeps in occasionally so um let's scoot that off so there's another shape to be kind of aware of that could happen and i'm going to just blue my canvas out again this is just the same blue on the brush okay So there's a couple of shapes that I would probably try and avoid and there are a few others but those are the main ones. Now I'm going to load my brush I'm going to repeat this little cloud and see if I can draw a little twin. So I'm not going to bother scratch going here I'm just going to freehand it for the purpose of the next little demonstration so let's just quickly pop on a little cloud plenty of paint a nice rich edge nice and fat and again leading my brush across the canvas I use it like a little palette knife just kind of smear the paint on to start with I'm not looking for anything other than the edge of my cloud it's all I like and paint it with some speed and go look at that perfect little cloud and in with my nice brush get that corner in there and you're doing those little circular strokes up and down bottom to almost the edge if you practice this consistently after a little while it becomes kind of an automatic um, way to paint clouds and you don't have to sit and think about it too much they just happen um, I try not to get too mechanical about it because you can just get stuck only ever painting that kind of a cloud so you've got to be open to doing other shapes of clouds 
but certainly if you're looking to do a little white fluffy clouds that that's a great technique and again I'm going to use the side of my brush just to pull that in quick there we go and a couple across just to smooth it down so there we go I got two nice little clouds this one hasn't got quite as much detail in the center my my blue color is getting a little pastel but that's okay because what I want to talk about next is is painting shadow clouds and so these are just white fluffy clouds but actually adding a shadow into it and I'm going to do a just right versus a not quite option here now this is where this color is going to come into play because I'm going to use a lavender color to make a little shadow under this cloud and I'm going to use it and I've pre-mixed it and then we're going to try making this little cloud and we're going to just be a little bit lazy and we're just going to use black so I'm going to get a small amount of this nice lavender color and I'm going to just put in a little shadow at the base of my cloud just gently just touch it in here and there and there and here here we go just drop it a little bit of shadow not a great deal not a huge amount just a little bit a shadow at the base of my cloud back to my nice brush and again I'm just gonna press push this down into the painting a little bit as there's, there's quite a little bit of white on there so I can just gently I'm just traveling up and down in my cloud again taking a bit up bring it some down I'm gonna keep my cloud at the base predominantly and then tap it out just another hair. Okay. And again, just gently pull across. And you see, I've got a really nice, harmonious looking little cloud there. It kind of fits together very nicely with the background and the sky. It's very harmonious, and it all looks like it works together because the lavender color I made with blue and the blue is the same as the sky so this kind of all fits together nicely so let's be a little lazy now and just say let's put black on let's say we got some black on our palette this is from last night I'm going to put just a small amount on just a deadly bit I'm wiping most of that off my brush and I'm going to put just a little bit of black in the hope that we can make a little bit of a gray color for our cloud and See immediately, even even let me wipe my brush a little bit. Even if I even if I wipe off practically everything from my brush, so it can't be too much paint that's causing this. And I put a little bit of this almost dry brush. And just to give it every chance, I'll blend it as well. Okay. Get the corner of my brush and just tap it up and down into my cloud. And, and try and do something with it. Try and make it look soft. And I'll try and pull it in. very soft very gentle but you can see the difference on this these two little clouds you can see that this one sort of works nicely and it fits with the background whereas this one with this deep dark shadow under it, it looks kind of menacing and it doesn't quite fit very harmoniously into my background black is the the problem here is that there is no black anywhere else in my sky except here and it really jumps off the canvas whereas this one with its lavender color really suits well now if i wanted to darken my shadow i could add a little tiny black into my lavender and get a slightly deeper lavender color but i would still have basically a lavender tone which is more harmonious with this cloud so there's a tip for you don't be lazy and just use black make yourself a little bit of a lavender color and you'll have a, a just right and not quite cloud I'm going to clean this off and we'll do the next little section. There we go. Now, 
I've been using fan brushes to paint my clouds, but I know people are keen to try and have a go with this one inch brush, but it does a great job with it. And they put a great big gob of white paint on the end of it, and they kind of get in there and it kind of starts stirring away, and they kind of trying to make a lovely fluffy cloud out of it. But you can see why I'm holding my brush here. It's more like a battle than it is a painting, and, and that's a problem sometimes. Now, the thing to remember here is I'm just painting on a 16 by 20 canvas, and I've only got half of that to play with really so I'm trying to paint it in a 10 inch gap um, Bob would paint these one inch brush clouds on, a, on an 18 by 24 can so he had a lot more room to play with so if you're trying to squeeze these clouds onto a little canvas then you're going to run into some troubles you're just going to run out of space but we'll have a go we'll see what we can do now I got my nice one inch brush here and I'm going to put some a nice bit of paint on my brush but I'm not just putting it everywhere look at my brush you can see I'm loading up and get in focus here I'm loading up the corner of my brush if I'm going to paint a one inch brush cloud I'm going to get it on one part of my brush and I'm going to load it really well okay and again you want to have a plan don't just go at this and hope for the best have a plan of where you're going with this cloud because they will get out of hand and they will grow too big so think about the top and the bottom of the cloud so the, the highest and the lowest point and the and the, the path between them. so if you're not sure sketch it use the point of a palette knife and sketch it so i'm going to use just the corner of my one inch brush and i'm going to just twirl this in and after just a very few seconds I'm out of paint and I need more and I need more and more so in that little distance I've loaded four lots of paint on my brush and I'm being very gentle a nice new brush and it takes a lot of paint to make a nice one inch brush cloud and I think that catches people out a lot they don't realize just how much paint it takes to get those clouds to work and if you go in a little bit un, unsure, a little bit kind of cautious with the amount of paint you're using, you're not going to get a really good fluffy cloud out of it. You just won't. And look at the shape I painted there. I painted a Loch Ness Monster. I didn't even mean it. Let's go back and fix that. That's what happens when you're concentrating on too many things. I'm looking at, this, I'm looking at the canvas. I'm looking at my screen. And, and I'm talking and I'm not doing all three very well sometimes okay let's, let's change that a little bit okay so there's my my big white fluffy cloud with a one inch brush and I've loaded my brush umpteen times five or six times easily so let's look what happens when you try and do this with just in not enough paint. So I put a little bit of paint on my brush and, and we go in with great expectations. And the problem is we kind of try to wring every little bit of paint from our brush. And sometimes when it doesn't quite show up, we're reluctant to put more paint on so we We'll go back over it again in the hope that we can somehow scare more paint from this brush. And well, we kind of get a kind of a cloud, but it's not really what we're looking for. It doesn't have that impact. And so we just go back over it again. And this is where the kind of frustration sets in. And I see this in my own paintings in the past. I sometimes see it in other people's paintings where I, I know they're working hard. They're trying their best to get a nice fluffy cloud but somehow they just don't seem to happen and they just end up being disappointing and 
the reason is the amount of paint and where you have it on the brush. You need a lot of paint right on the corner of the brush. Let's highlight this one. Since we've got a few minutes, I've got a little bit of this lavender color on the go here. So again, I put a little bit on the corner of my brush. And again, I'm gonna go just up into the base of my cloud. Stir it in. So I'm just gonna go up and down. Up and down. But because I've got a lot of paint here, I need a lot of paint for my shadow. There we go, up and down into my cloud. Twirling away. And I got a really nice soft billowy sort of cloud there, one of those really big, great big nice billowy clouds. And it didn't take too long to do it. Let's finish that off with dry clean my brush. So it gives you a very different looking cloud. These ones are really tight. These ones are really soft and sort of loose. And again, no pressure. Just, just going to roll that paint in from the edge. Just pulling that paint into the center of the cloud. And across. So there you go. Tight and loose and fluffy. So let's try and put a little bit of shadow on this one, but I'm afraid I'm gonna I'm gonna trip myself up again. I'm gonna try and do it with a little bit of black. Because I'm determined to get a bit of a grey colour on my cloud. And so I'm putting on a little bit of the, the black paint. And let's see if I can make it work in my cloud. And I'm going to try really hard to do a nice job on this. And, well, it, it sort of works. But I'm using, I'm using a brush which has got so little paint on it that it, it's almost the residue of the lavender color doing this. It's, it's got really nothing much to do with the black I'm putting on. Put a hint more black into it. Oh, look at that. Tiny bit, I put a little tiny bit of black on my brush. Pow. And it's literally a couple of strands of black. And there we go. It's a shocker, isn't it? The difference between the two clouds is, is quite dramatic. Black is just not your friend when you want to paint little shadows in clouds. It's if you want to deepen up a shadow, um, put a little bit of black into your lavender. I mean, just 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 the tiny little hint of, of black. I put a little tiny drop of black just to deepen up my mauve color a little bit, but it's still predominantly mauve. And if I put that into my cloud, it's dramatic, it has a big effect, but it's still basically a deep lavender color. So don't be lazy, mix yourself up a shadow color. Don't just rely on a tube color straight to fix the problems. Well, that's really covers the sort of two main sort of cloud types to get the either big sort of billowy clouds and these slightly tighter clouds, but there's a little Brucey bonus for you. I'm just gonna throw you in a little fast and easy little cloud, one that, um, that really works great and, and they're so quick and easy to do, but it does require that you're kind of very relaxed and it's no good you painting tight, you've got to paint relaxed. So I put a little bit more paint on my palette and I've gone into a little bit of white paint here. Now, maybe at this point I'm gonna try and flash up on screen a couple of photographs of some skies. Um, I'll put them up even though I'm talking and I can't actually see what I'm putting on the screen here yet, but there's two skies. There's one that was taken down in Dorset down at uh, West Bay um, where they filmed that amazing crime thriller Broadchurch. And the other one is taken through our living room window here in Worthing. So these are just sun, one's a sunrise and one's a sunset. And they, the skies are just amazing, just scattered colors everywhere. And these really light sort of 
clouds skimming across as you can see on these photographs well I'm going to show you how I paint those really light loose clouds I'm putting on a little bit of white paint on my brush and, and I'm going to just basically twirl I'm going to just paint little circles and I'm going to twirl with my brush and, and just see how we get on so here we go so stay loose stay loose for this with the corner of my brush and twirl and just press and flip it and twirl and flip and looking through my monitor to see the screen here see how I'm doing with this and wow look at that jet stream clouds just letting your brush just run and skip and bump and push and just have fun and you can create these kind of amazing little cloud sequences and they just literally uh, tumble from the brush but don't try and control them that's that's the clue don't try and make it into a shape just let the brush do its own thing and I'm just gonna finish that off no I can't finish it off my I put all my brushes in to soak so this is how it's going to stay um, as I say I'm shooting this sort of on the fly so I'm not editing too much of this but learn to paint these fluffy little clouds um, so we got tight billowy and these kind of clouds that just run and jump across the, the sky paint a bunch of these on a canvas close your eyes and just hit with the brush and go you will be stunned at, at how good they come out and it, this is the sort of style of cloud I painted when I did this one, I just fetched it back from the other side of the studio. I painted the seascape. Those clouds there that I painted, they're all painted using that technique where I just let the brush just run and jump and skip around. So that's how they were painted. And then they just got a little bit of a blend on them. So um, if you enjoyed seeing this being painted, I did this live on a, a very precarious technical setup using my smartphone, but I, I may repeat this one here and um, I'll do another seascape for you so get it back onto my screen here again so that's it folks that's the end of uh, clouds not quite versus just right let me get back to my logos there they are so clouds not quite just right and I, I hope this has been fun and I hope you maybe picked up a few tips and tricks and things and see how maybe you don't get it right and maybe how we can improve on things so um, I'm going to be back in a couple of Wednesdays time. I couldn't tell you the date. I'm not that bright today. Um, but yeah, two Wednesdays from now, second Wednesday from now, I'm going to be doing some wildlife just for a change. And I'm going to be painting a big cat eye. So it's going to be a, um, just a demonstration to see if I can make a nice glassy looking eye for a big cat. So hopefully some fun to be had there. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves, have fun painting and, uh, Happy painting people. See you in two weeks.